ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Seacourt Real Tennis Club for the Ladies British Open 2024. My name is Ben Gatenbeek. I will be talking you through the coverage of the match tonight. We are now at the quarterfinal stage of this competition. We have had some excellent early rounds, uh, but now we really begin to approach uh, the business end of the event. So we will have tennis lined up for you all evening, so wherever you are watching from in the world, do settle down. Four excellent quarterfinals, two singles, two doubles to play tonight. And then that goes into the Vigras sisters in the semi-finals of this event. This is a an April filled with tennis across the board uh, and rackets. There are plenty of events coming up to whet your appetite. This of course is the British Ladies Open. This will conclude on Sunday. And then starting Monday, we'll be bringing you coverage of the British Open doubles rackets live from the Queen's Club. That will also include the British Ladies Open doubles rackets on the following Sunday. That week we will also have the IRTPA Super League, a brand new event for the calendar this year at the Queen's Club. Uh, and then we will also have coverage of the Category A's at Manchester, after which you should have a head over to the USCTA YouTube for the World Doubles Championships culminating at the beginning of May with the Ladies World Rackets Championship. So let's have a look at the players for tonight. Starting with recently reached a personal best world ranking no world number 18 on the ladies tour easy marshall is the captain of the oxford blues team recently uh, finishing her degree there a couple of years ago and this is her second major tournament she played in the Ladies World Championships at the Oratory last season as her debut knockout tournament. And this is her first British Open tournament. So look at this new graphic for this year, the tournament history. There is no tournament history for Izzy Marshall. This is her first British Ladies Open. Her path to this point started with Jane Taylor in a very, very quick match. The whole match was over in 19 minutes uh, in the first round and second round. Uh, a little bit more challenging against Sophie Danruther, but held strong in the five-all game. And now she is in her first open quarterfinal. Her opponent tonight has been in the top of the ladies game for a long time now. Jess Garside, age 29, ladies world ranking of number 11. This is her home court, as you'll see by that court adjustment for C court. She's played enough matches here now that she has a court adjustment of 1.3. That means she tends to play 1.3 points better than her handicap when she's playing at C court. Career highlights, reached the French Ladies Open semi-final on two occasions. 
reached the semi-finals of this event on two occasions as well and won the plate of the Wet Ladies World Championships in 2017. Not yet. Let's do it. Her tournament history here has never reached a semi-final stage. Reached yeah. quarterfinals twice in 2018 and 2019. Both times falling victim to Sarah Vigras, who is back at the tournament this year. And then she'll be playing doubles later tonight with Tara Lumley in the quarterfinals of that competition. Her form guide played in the Australian Ladies Open at Hobart just a few weeks ago and before that the Bathurst Cup in what was ultimately a defeat for the Great Britain, Great Britain team against the rest of the world uh, in that competition. And this is the first time that these two have met in a level singles competitive match. That's mostly a factor of Izzy Marshall being Ladies relatively and gentlemen, new to the game. Welcome to the Seacall Tennis Club for the quarterfinal of the Ladies British Open singles. Clap if you want. I'm Marcus Day, Seacall Professional Drew Lyons. Introducing the players from Oxford, we have Izzy Marshall. Yay! Service end from Seacall, Jess Gossard. This match is the best of three six game sets, played off level. Yes, to serve, level. <laughs> Big love. Jess Garside is, of course, the fourth seed uh, in this tournament. Four. Well, I guess we'll touch on as the weekend progresses as it is relatively speaking a weak draw here at the British Ladies Open there's a few names that you'd expect to see in amongst the seeds that aren't here perhaps most notably uh, Leia van der Zwalman and Saskia Bollerman both were at this year's Bathurst Cup down in Australia and as the top of the ladies game is still mostly amateur most of these players do have to still hold down a day job Chase better than four. and so can't afford to spend too much time touring the world playing tennis so they're not at this particular event so soon okay. 40 loves Better than second gallery. Yeah, good job. Fifteen, forty. Receiver. The first game going the way of the home player Jess Garside. And I suspect we will see her long experience at the open level showing through tonight. Chase, head on the yard. Up. On the handicap, she's six points better than Izzy Marshall. Add on to that all that experience. Three. Let's have a quick look at the ladies' world rankings coming into this tournament. Uh, this is the second page. This is ranks 11 through 20. As you can see, Jess Garside up at number 11, handicap 34. And then down at 18, a new addition, 
to this rankings list is Izzy Marshall. Seven leads, 15 as well as Chase better than a yard. our other um, qualifier through to the quarter finalist, Minty Oldham. Also now in that number 19 position. That's better than the yard chase. 30 love. Jess will leave better that alone. Three. I think we've seen from Izzy so far this tournament that she is not afraid to give it a bit of oomph on her shots. Probably one of the harder hitters of uh, these up and coming female players on the circuit. 40 love receiver leads, Chase worse than four. Whereas Jess tends to hit more for length um, as her way of manufacturing points. Game receiver, two games to love. Growing up here, <coughs> living just across the road from the Seacourt Tennis Club. Seacourt is a great court if you want to play length. So you get a bit of cut on it and the court will reward you. I think, again, of these, the players that we've seen so far this week, I think Easy Marshall definitely has the most accurate railroad. It's not a service he played a lot amongst the girls. tend to see a little bit more variety in the serve. There was a time a few years ago in the men's game where it just seemed that all the top guys were serving railroads all the time. A bit of variety has come back in the men's game. It's always been there in the women's game. So we see our marker. Seacourt so head professional drew lines. Chase worse than three. It will be in that marker's box for the duration of this tournament. What's the chase? 30 love. Chase 5. Jess knocks up her first grill of the evening. Sure. And again, three mm. games to love. Let's go off with. One of the things with Easy's play is she doesn't get an awful lot of cut on that ball, which means she's not using the C court back wall to her fullest advantage here. Played most of her tennis at Oxford. Oh. I think that rally is probably what Izzy's going to be needed to do a lot more of 
in this particular match. Just using a bit of that power to, to make Jess run from side to side a bit more. So Jess coming into this tournament, as we mentioned, has had a lot of tennis under her belt. She has been off in Australia playing in the Ladies Bathurst and then at the Australian Ladies Open just over a week and a half ago. And we'll have Tara and Claire Good also coming Good from up. Australia. Uh, to play, so it's a question of, or well, a combination of being in match fitness versus still getting over that long flight. Oh. Yeah. 15, 40. There is a sizable Oxford contingent uh, in the dead on tonight. Things that the Oxford and Cambridge uh, clubs do particularly well is support their own. It's a very tight railroad by Izzy Marshall to bring up Juice. <coughs> she has played very well this tournament. And now has a chance to get on the board for the first time. And she does it. She just missed that go a little bit wide. But that two-handed backhand from Jess can't quite get under the ball to lift it back over the net. If you look up Jess Garside on RTO, you'll find that her tagline is Princess. she can have what she calls princess moments on court if she loses a few points in a row and that's something that Izzy Marshall will have to try and exploit tonight if she wants to take a set or even indeed the match. And that, that rest there really set up by Marshall coming across and playing that forehand volley using that lawn tennis technique and eye coordination just to meet that ball in there. is a very crisp volley by Izzy Marshall. Really just showing off with her play in the air there. And things playing at sea court is if you're not used to it, you really can't be affording to leave falls to that back wall. You've got the talent and the speed that Marshall has. By all means, go for it in the air. Oh. Jess is wanting a bit for a chase here. She let that whole last game slip through without setting a chase. And just as I bring it up, it inevitably 
there comes that chase. And that volley there by Jess hitting down on the ball. Just meaning that it does it's already hit the, the, the floor perfectly around that six last gallery mark. Just has nowhere else to go. It's a good tactic by Jess. Seeing that Marshall's playing it in the air. Trying to really shorten that first bounce. A bit of pace on it is a good way to counter that that volleying. And that it's not just the volleying, it's the, the half volleying as well, just scrambling around and getting into it before the back wall. Just put, puts Marshall under so much more pressure. Server leads 30 15, mm. Chase better than four. So, better than four is the chase. It's going to be awkward. Jess does well. Just got far enough away from that back wall. Yeah. Okay. 15. Oh. <coughs> Worse than four. It's come down tight to the wall. There's not much Izzy could do there. But just gets a bit of funny spin off it. Just not quite able to pick it up off that back wall. Marshall's playing well here tonight. goes out for a hazard. That particular shot there, that volley coming across the play, across the forehand side, I think Marshall's is actually better than Garside's there. I think Garside's probably got the more rounded game, but just that particular shot, I think Marshall has it. She's got so much potential if she wants to continue playing. And the problem is she's finished her degree, she's moved to Juice London. Hazard better than second gallery. There aren't actually that many good opportunities to play if you're not a Queen's member and you're in the London area. There's a great railroad coming back in. And brave, brave tennis there from Izzy Marshall. Chase was has the yard. And she's attacking that winning gallery. If you think you've got the accuracy, it's a great shot to be playing. But it comes with a lot of risk. That pays off. And we are at three all. Chase two. awkward as well in and around the timbre two very awkward balls there 
So you are watching the British Ladies Open from the Seacourt Tennis Club. This is the quarterfinal stage. We will have one more singles quarterfinal tonight and then the two uh, singles semi-finals will be played tomorrow in the mid-afternoon. Mid All of that will be live here on the TNRA YouTube channel, so do not miss that. We will have the Ladies World Champion, Claire Fay, playing in that singles semi-final against the winner of this match. So, Chase 2. Chase, Christina. Worse than second gallery. Yard. That's the risk sometimes with going for that grill. If you miss it and you put it too hard, it's going to bounce out for Hazard. Jess hasn't looked particularly strong at that receiver's end, and that is a great oh, pickup from Izzy Marshall. Hazard better than a yard. So first chase is a hazard. Marshall's done well on the hazards tactically so far. More than a yard worse than last gallery. Driving for that nick, not giving Jess anything to lift Ooh. up of. <coughs> Ooze from the crowd, but Drew has seen far worse than that. is <coughs> called over. Game to server. <coughs> Four games to three. So Marshall now with a bit of a lead, four straight games in a row. Yeah. What can Jess do? She needs to stop getting stuck down that hazard end. We say it all the time. The chases are so critical in this match, in this sport. Again, that forehand volley from Marshall is looking superb tonight. I just wonder, oh, if we go, we're going to go down to a... Oops. Oh. I just wonder if two things that Jess probably needs to do a little bit more is on that forehand get it a little bit wider just to cut off Marshall's opportunity for that volley she, she's 
patrolling around about that chase three mark. Get it on the wall at about three, just there. Uh, and that just means that she's not going to get as under pressure from that forehand volley. And secondly, start to just put it on Marshall's backhand a bit more. She's tested out that forehand side. That, I think, is proving to not be the correct answer. So, really, let's see. We'd like to see some interrogation of Marshall's backhand from Garside. Whoever leads 40-15, a chase worse than two. Worse than two. Worse than two is the chase. Gas have a bit of a buffer in this game. Games the server, four games all. Yes. So we are now at four all here in this first four set. First set. <laughs> Based on the handicaps, you'd say it's been a very good match so far from Izzy Marshall. What that underarm twist is doing in those last two points is putting Marshall on the half volley on the return of serve. Just not as comfortable as playing it off of that back wall. Jess puts herself under so much pressure when she's playing. She needs to stay cool for the remainder of this set. You can tell she's getting a little bit frustrated already. Gonna stay composed. Only six points away. And that dead on just floats in from Izzy Marshall. Have a look at that dead on again. Just kind of floats on the volley. Jess not happy with herself from that. One thing about Izzy is that she is very calm on the court. Never really showing much emotion. Well composed. 30 all chase worse than six. So worse than six is the chase here at 30 all in the four all game. On the chase, 40 30. It's an excellent line from Jess there. That's what she's been struggling with earlier. Because that's the line that's going to put Izzy under a bit more pressure. That's well read from Jess off the timbre there. A bit fortunate that it just hit a little bit side off the back wall and stayed close to it, but she will take it at this point. She's been struggling to find that chase. So C Court Bar is absolutely buzzing tonight. Uh, 
Uh, the dead on is all full. The bar is packed. There's people watching from the bar. There's people hanging about. There's going to be dinners um, uh, in Wynyard's tonight here at Seacourt. Certainly a great atmosphere <coughs> to, to watch tennis from if you ever get the opportunity. And of course, if you are in the south of England, <coughs> do come down receiver, chase the last over carry. the next couple of days over the weekend to watch what promises to be some fantastic tennis in the latter stages of the British Ladies Open this year. So last gallery. On the chase and the game, five games to four. Marshall being very bold. <laughs> very bold on her attacking that last gallery chase. It does pay off, but really floating it near that last gallery window. So now five games to four for Marshall. Jess does not look happy with herself at the moment. Mind you, she often doesn't look happy on the tennis court. She can get herself into all sorts of trouble, just controlling those emotions sometimes. So yeah, she's down in the set and two short chases here. You'd say that Marshall's rapidly become the favourite to take this set from those two chases. <coughs> Both very good lengths. Server lead, 15 love. <coughs> chase half a yard. 15 love server, half a yard. So half a yard chase. Marshall going for that underarm twist. And that ball is wide. So now a worse than three chase. That's just a bit of fortune that Jess needed there. Marshall was looking fairly solid in that point. Just the unforced error late <coughs> in this first set. Great shot. There we go. As I said earlier, interrogating that, that backhand of Izzy's going to be what's required from Jess. Oh, and there's another unforced error from Jess to bring up set point for Izzy Marshall. She cannot believe it. And again, that's that line from Jess just trying to cut out that volley return so still set point with a better than three chase and that's looking a lot better for, for Garside now and still any chase is beatable people need 40, 30 better than three <coughs> Better than three is the chase. She's probably going to serve her underarm twist again. Yeah, here we go. Oh. And the set goes to Izzy Marshall. First set receiver, 6-4. Second set level. She was three love down and has won six of the last seven games. Worse than six. Take that set. Jess not happy with herself. What great play from Marshall now. Worse than six by
So let's have a look at some of those stats from that set. 32 minutes for it. Both players very dominant from that service end. It serves one percentages up above that 60% mark. You normally expect that to be around about 55% on average. Less than six. Just two points in it, but Marshall is the victor. Worse than six chase now. I think that rally there really exemplifies the difference between Marshall's forehand and her backhand. That forehand is so aggressive. Oh. And that backhand just a little bit less controlled. On the chase, was five. 30 up. Jess was a bit fortunate there. She was a bit flat-footed on that volley. The ball kind of got away from her and she ended up boasting it towards that main wall, which was not what her intention was. Oh. That will just float over for a hazard chase. So Izzy Marshall from Oxford taking that first set. Will she manage to hold on and take another? Again, Jess Garside is the favourite on paper. She is the fourth seed in this tournament. She's got a handicap 10 points to the better. <coughs> on Jess. So you would say that is a good result for Marshall so far. Which I'd like to convert that into a full-blown win and a semi-final position. Ah! Come on! First game, second set. going to say it was going to be tough because it was floating in just the wrong way and it just happened to float into that last gallery. That ball from, from Marshall has been hit with topspin because this back sea court wall is so grippy that's what made it kind of float up a bit. She's hitting that with cut, then that completely dies. That has just got the top of that grill bando. So you see this point from earlier in the rally. A big scream, a big come on there from Jess. That's what she needs to do to try and use the pain of losing that set into something positive as long as it stays controlled. 15, 30, receiver, last hour. <laughs> hazard better than half a yard. Forty 
Murphy. That's unlucky from Izzy there because she got the result she wanted from that railroad. A nice easy ball off the back wall to try and hit towards that winning gallery. But not to be. Gallery. And that's just picked up some net tape on the way through. I think the positive for Jess here is that she has figured out that tactic, that way of manufacturing points and, uh, and chases now. Just a little bit lost for it in the middle of that, the middle stages of that first set. Just trying to work out what the strategy is. These two haven't played before. Easy Marshall hasn't been around long. That was advantage, worse than second at the top of the game, so it's a little bit more of an unknown quantity when you go into this kind of match against somebody like that compared to somebody that you have played before and you kind of know what's what to expect. And there's that C court back wall. It's caught just out a couple of times. Just getting a, a bit of a racket tip on that one. Yes. Come on. Come on. And that's just gone the wrong way for Jess. Just tipped the wrong side of that net cord, and that's the kind of thing that can get her a bit wound up sometimes. She feels like the lock's not going her way. Yes, well played. Service advantage. And we are now at the fifth juice of this particular game. Marshall just looking for that chase. Trying to get back down the service end is where she's looked better. Yeah. Service advantage. have a quick look this was the the strike call that was made just moments before and you can see yeah Jess just getting the end of her racket to that ball so Jess has the advantage short chase here long juice game Great stuff to see. Great tennis, worthy of a quarterfinal. Yeah. And the game. I do really think that Two backhand side really is the side to go for Jess here. It's 
not only does it give Izzy fewer options playing that uh, shot towards the timbre, I think it is just a weaker strike in general, even if you take the court out of it. Building towards the lead now, getting that longer juice game. She did have a three love lead in that first set. I think if she manages to get to a three love lead here, I think it will stick just a little bit better just because she's figured out the game tactics a bit more. <coughs> yes, that shot from Jess laying the chase. Just getting a great length on it. And you see that, that volley there from Izzy, that's such a good volley. going to take her far if she continues with this game. Chase better than a yard. So better than a yard is the chase. I haven't seen too much Sorry. of a forcing game from Marshall yet. The dead on she did manage to get was floated in. It's going to be just Last too gallery. high, not enough control on that force. So they were playing off a chase there. That's why Izzy Amazing. had to run forward and try and play it instead of leaving it for as a chase. So we're at three love. We were here in the first set. <laughs> Jess, I think, is looking a little bit more relaxed into the rhythm of the game now. Oh. oh great shot. that dead on again from Izzy but yeah Jess now I think is looking a lot more comfortable she's able to get chases a bit more easily and has just managed to figure out Izzy's game a bit more so I think great credit to the way that Izzy has played so far in this match. Super leads, 40-15, chase the second gallery. <coughs> second gallery. I think she has shown how much talent she has with a racket in her hand. Oh. 
And the game, four games to love. That was a bit more bounce than Izzy was probably expecting off that, that side penthouse. And that one is called a stroke. <laughs> that ball has hit the <laughs> three different ledges on its way into last gallery. Last gallery. see that, that rally again which ends in that last gallery. Fifteen all, last gallery. Yeah, it just gets the underside of or the bottom of the, the door ledge bounces up without striking any posts. It's the bando and then the last gallery ledge and goes in. That's incredible. Yes. Forty fifteen server shows one and two. Chase worse than two. Oh, oh, oh. 40 well, 15. Well watched. So a five love lead now to Jess Garside. Which is much more like you would expect based on the seedings. Again, she has really settled into this game. Super League, 40 15, chase three. my scoreboard. I think Drew might have called something a little bit Game strange. And we are now at five love. Five games for love. Second test. I think one of the things with Mark and Thinnett, you are in you are in danger of being struck there. As you, you saw from Drew sees the ball is coming and just ducks his head behind the net and just keep him safe he does an absolutely amazing job there oh yeah. great and very we are very um, fortunate to have have him with us at an event like this
think one thing to remember is that Izzy has already played two singles matches this weekend, including one earlier today, whereas this is Jess's first match of the event. So Izzy's legs are just a bit more tired. I think you're starting to see that now that we are an hour into this match. Jess has parked herself up next to the microphone. That's the, the breathing that you can hear. So she is working too. It's good to know. It's not all easy when you're five love up. She has had to work for it. But she will be much happier now that it looks like she's about to take this second set. Server lead 15.30, chase the line. Fantastic volley by Izzy Marshall there. Just absolutely killing it. So Jess does indeed take that set. Six games to love. One set all, final set level. That is a much better result from her, I think. She does the rackets thing of putting your racket on your head when the ball is up high. You'll see all the rackets players do that when there's ball up in the rafters. Uh, but now it looks like Jess is now in cruise control. Second gallery, 15 love. Just looking so much more reassured. Oh. Second gallery, three. It's great deception by Izzy Marshall there. It, from where she was, it looked like her only choice was to play that into the backhand corner. She just comes around at that last moment. So the stats from that second set, 23 minutes. And that points one, instead of being very even as it was in the first, is now a, a bit more one-sided. 15 love receiver leads, second gallery. All around second those statistics gallery. are much more favourable to Garside. Worse than two. A particular straight there, Marshall just able to get that little bit of extra pace on it compared to what most of the shots have been in this match. Off the chase, 30-15. She does have just a little bit of strength. She can throw behind a ball. Thirty all. Those ones are tricky sometimes. They're rolling around the side penthouse. There's not a lot you can do with them. 40-30. The ball just comes out of the nick funny there. Give Marshall a chance for her first game for seven games. Game 
Deserve it. And indeed she does. First game, final set. Can she build some momentum from it though? Yes. The big remaining question. You, you kind of feel that the way Jess is playing at the moment, if she if Jess had got to a two or three game lead in this set. then it would all be done and dusted. So early in this set is the best time for Marshall to strike. Mind you, these are two very good chases now. Haven't really seen Marshall find a way to make the most to well, really to find a way to attack at all uh, the short chases the game doesn't come naturally with a lot of cut uh, and her forcing is a little bit wayward so we'll That's see right. how Chase she approaches two these two three. chases Better than half a yard. She was trying to volley them. I'm not sure on the short chases. Her volley is quite good enough to be able to attack them like that. That one's gone high too. I think one of the things when you're playing a force, you've got to keep that center of mass of your body low through the entire shot is so easy to lift out of the shot and then you can lift the ball up yeah. it's just a great point all around there really good chase at the end of it. And Let's have a look at that again. Just see how this point gets constructed. Big volley there. Just able to get onto it, but not really controlled. And then just finishing it down the side. Better than a yard. So short chase here now for Jess to attack. 15, 30. It too Nine, is high, but she's not under the same scoreboard pressure really. So have to be able to hit those. Oh. That is a shot we have seen Izzy Marshall play so well this evening. Forced error brings up the juice. Juice. I think one of the things with the Jesses game, even if it's not flashy, it's very solid an answer to most things and she does think about the game a bunch even if she can get flummoxed from time to time because I think Marshall's game t is very strong in some areas particularly in the air and on that railroad uh, but has a few weaknesses especially deep into those corners
it's just such a classy stroke. Really seeing that lawn tennis technique. So, two long chases now. First one comes via an unforced error from Jess. Now the second one, Chase, the line. You've got to really prevent the ball going in any of those galleries, really for both players. Tactics usually are keep the ball on that left-hand side as you see it, or onto the timer. to find the timbre and the, Jess. And the wall is just a little bit too low for Izzy I think it had so little pace on it if it had stayed in I don't know if Jess really would have got there for it Rally and Jess unleashes a scream. Serves the Martin. Just have another look at that rally from before. Both players not giving an inch, really. Just this backhand to backhand stuff. Probably both players weak aside. Chase better than two. And that final shot and a big scream. Back live, better than two is the chase. It has not made it. We're at juice. Chess does well off the timbre to read that. And that is unfortunate for. Easy Marshall. Again, we're seeing one of these long juice games. We've had a couple of them this match. Second game of the second set particularly stands out. That's where the momentum really shifted to Jess. And that is a fine, fine volley from Marshall to get to an advantage. Half a 
have a look at some of those replays just getting caught up and this one as well this is the one that ends in that crisp 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 volley just like that it's a shot she has played exceptionally well this afternoon You are watching the British Ladies Open quarterfinal stage. There's plenty more tennis for you this afternoon, this evening. Coming up next will be the second of our two quarterfinals between Tara Lumley and Minty Oldham. Great serve. And that one, Come that on. serve just dies. Eef. serve from Jess again just hits the nick and does not come out fist pumps from Jess you see it just dies in that nick there is nothing that Marshall can do once she's decided not to volley it but unfortunate as well I think Marshall initially didn't think that quite had the pace on it in the end it just trickled over In the last few, last few minutes, two games to love. Jess has really lost a bit of that accuracy in her line. She's letting Marshall play that volley a little bit more easily. That's why we've seen Marshall take these two games. Oh, that is exceptionally well done, digging it off the side wall right down low Jess had completely stopped she thought she'd won it and that's just lazy from Jess there I'll take a moment just take a breather doesn't like losing she's too lava down 35 down really needs to pick it up now that's a bit fortunate for Jess that could have gone base of timbre or grill if Marshall just got a fraction more on it it's not a shot she can be relying on to get points Nor is that. There's another unforced error. Sometimes it's tricky. You've just got so much time when it's coming round off that penthouse. 40, 30. Jess has had the fortune of the last few points, but emotionally, I think that's what she needs. Just to feel like she's winning points again no matter how they come 
This is the one just couldn't quite read it off the top of that net tape. Should see it again, yeah, from the other angle. Oh, that's not the angle. From this angle. Just realised at the last moment they was going to beat the chase. Had to play it. It was no real position to. So, has a chase now. This has the potential to go to juice again. Jess just taking her time. I believe 40-30, Hazard better than a yard. Hazard. Hazard chase. Oh. <clears throat> yes, come on. Jess Garside is on the board in the third set. Just four points ago, she looked like she'd given up. And just managed to find some extra fight. Yes! And that is a great shot, great backhand there from Jess. She's very happy with it as well. Crowd behind her, home crowd here at Seacourt. again has just been on the fortunate end of a couple of unforced errors from Marshall just in the last few minutes she will take every point she can at this point in time so again that shot from Jess so crisp and clean and a big celebration to follow Exactly what you want from a backhand. Just over the lowest part of the net and onto the timbre. So chase two goes for it on the floor. All she can do is find the net. So, Izzy Marshall was two love, 30 love ahead. And Jess kind of gave up on a ball. Went and had a good talking to herself at the grill. And ever since that point, Jess has just come out swinging. And is looking very good. So do stay tuned after this match. We will have the other quarterfinals to follow. That will be Minty Oldham and Tara Lumley. 
Minty has had an impressive run of form of late. Getting her handicap down about five points in the last 12 months or so. Really starting to push through into the, that 30s handicap range. Tara Lumley back from Australia. Um, and not paired with Claire Fay this week in the doubles. Four. That honour instead going to Claire's sister Sarah, who is playing for the first time in about two years. Yes. Third. What's it now, Jess? 30, 15. Just a bit of confusion as to when that point was actually over. So this was moments ago, this chase was better than four. First bounce there, the second bounce landing worse than four. Absolutely eyes of a hawk. Drew Lyons there. Exceptionally well marked as always. so many times this evening from Izzy, just that strength that she has in the air. Get in. That unfortunately 40, has hit the bando and gone out long. Searching for a winning gallery there. Uh, up and out of court. It is getting tense out there. Marshall will be very happy with how this match has gone. She's got so much talent. Great to see if she continues with the game going forward. Grill. Again, I've said it so many times this evening. Just showing her strength in the air. And she takes the game back in the lead. Server leads three games to two. Here in the final set. Second time ball has gone into the last gallery after bouncing around the, the gallery ledges. So yeah, so this this point here, just watch how strong Marshall is in the air. Just using that lawn tennis technique. Short backswing. Coming down through the ball. Gets so much control and eventually ending in that grill. has been a fantastic quarterfinal so far. 
the nature of the draw of the British Open means you don't always get close matches as you have a range no of about 70 handicap last points between carry. the strongest player and the weakest player in the draw so you do get some fairly quick ones but this has been absolutely enthralling the Seacourt crowd are loving it last gallery of the chase Okay, last gallery. One, two, Chess, once again, just taking her time, trying to recompose herself. She can't afford to let too many points, more points, slip away. Trying a drag serve for the first time this evening, unsuccessfully. 15.30. Last time... She was feeling like this. It took a couple of unforced errors from Marshall just to buoy up Jess's spirits. Yes. Come on. 30 all. Backhand of Jess's, that double hander over the low part of the net, so strong. Pulled nope. down by Drew. Jess can't quite believe it. It was a very good point for her up to that point. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, the ball has just come down before it gets to Jess's racket. She's playing it up off the floor. So good call by Drew. Even if Jess is a little bit annoyed from it. Now she's up against it with two short chases. Fertile chase worse than four. So worse than four is the first chase. <laughs> Haven't really seen either of these pair be particularly strong on the short chases tonight. Two. Jess just can't quite find the weight on that one. Worse than two is the second chase. Game to the server. Four games to two. Yes, come on. Let's go. So now Easy Marshall just two games away from a semi final. Garside <laughs> really needs to rally now. It's now or never. Question is, will Marshall be getting nervous now? This is her first open she's only eight points away from a semi-final which is quite the quite the achievement if she does get there 
Evening, love, server. Chase better than two. Jess has played eight or so British Opens and has never reached a semi-final. Chase, Whatever the case, it is shaping up to be a thrilling finish. Do not go anywhere. Chase has a chase, so playing off the high back wall isn't terrible thing but you've got to have the power to really get it up first bounce around about the door if that's the shot you're going to play and the game. that was a great return of serve by Marshall but Garside was Three games to four. up to it just places that on the base of the timbre So, what will happen here? It has been a great match so far. What a great fight both these two girls have shown. The Seacourt bar is filling up nicely. A packed dead on here at Seacourt. A few people down the side gallery as well. Once again, a big Oxford contingent. We have the Oxford first team and second team captain both here. They played in the handicap doubles <coughs> earlier this afternoon. You can see uh, Oxford. Former Hassan captain and current Gallery. captain on the left and right of your screen there. Mary Strevens is the current Oxford captain. Oxford ladies falling short from the Cambridge ladies at this year's varsity match. Chase, worse than four. So worse than four is the second chase. Short chases. It's very almost down from Izzy Marshall. focus in the bar has gone away from the drinks and towards the screens and to the windows onto the court. She's not quite really in that angle here. Jess has looked best when she's been attacking that particular angle. And she's gone awry. She's just gone a little bit too straight. Great finish by Marshall. Exactly what she needed at that point in time. Had the time. She struggled a few times off that that high uh, higher part of the wall. But absolutely clinically finishes it. Let's have a look at it again. Look at that footwork off the back of the court. Has the time to set up. And just neatly finishes it down that forehand side. Receiver leads 40 15, worse than three. <coughs> worse than three. This is a, a big, big point for this match. If it goes 5 3, Garside will have no more room for error. 30, 40. Whereas if it's 4 all, then it's really anybody's game. So again, going with this drag serve for a bit. Game 
Receiver, five games. She had three. to play that volley. It was going to sneak in. And we are now 5 3 in this third and final set. All to do here for Jess Garside. Opting not for the drag. He's going to play the bobble instead. Probably the, the safer serve. The theory goes she can't afford any loose points at this stage. She can't afford a, a rogue serve. Very close to out of court there. And a great finish for Jess Garside. She's finding it again over that low part of the net. Both players, when they've looked into that, uh, that forehead corner, have done so clinically well with their finishing. Does well to pick that off the timbre and had a bit of a funny bounce to it she reads it just well enough to dribble it over the net for the chase so look, this is just playing at the back of the court that two hand back two handed backhand technique something used by extensively in the girls game a little bit less so by the boys, but you see. Chase worse than two. Perhaps with the boys, it's a two. bit more the left handers who, who, who play that two handed backhand. Chase off. Oh, called chase off. Big call by Drew. More than a yard worse than last gallery. Just have a look at that chase off call there by Drew. It is very close. So the first bounce coming in, and that second bounce, I think. It's hard to say because there's no actual line there, but I think that's closer to two and three than worse than two. I guess it's a little bit of make up your own judgment. That, that angle looks a little bit more like a worse than two on the chase off. I think we'll give Drew the benefit of the doubt. Now have a chase of one and two. And Izzy Marshall finds the dead on on that short chase. I think it's been their best dead on of the night. It comes at such a crucial time. Is that Again, if she doesn't make that chase, then Jess is 4-5 and much closer to levelling it up. Now she's at juice and a chance to close out this match. And that brings up the first match point to Izzy Marshall. Can't quite do it on the first attempt. Volley finding the net. Float into the hazard galleries. 
No more margin for error for Jess here. Jess will be breathing a sigh of relief having defended that first match point but she is now down that hazard end it's not where she wants to be <coughs> so Artage, receiver. so tense here at Seaport first gallery Has a chase first gallery again, looking to get the ball into the galleries really from either side. It's not going to serve second serve Royal Road. Just goes with the bobble, and that gives Izzy some options. Jess was playing for the tam, but just didn't quite hit it. And back to Juice. And that is exactly what Jess needs. Get the advantage, get back down the serving end. The short chase. Marshall beat beat the one and two chase earlier in this game but it seems unlikely that she'll be able to do it a second time <coughs> so advantage to Jess advantage. she's Chase still 3-5 down in this set how does she respond here and she keep her cool. Underarm twist serve. Was going in. Second attempt here on the backhand. The chase it's and not the going to do it. Time. Jess holds on. One match point saved. Already. And now we're into the 4-5 game. A strange point all around really. Just those legs feeling a bit tired, turning on that to take it on the backhand. Just is leaning back a bit too much on that volley. That volley return of serve really hasn't worked all that well for, for Izzy too much tonight. Chance here, going to spin back awkwardly. Two and three. And that ball just finding the lip of the top of the bando and just got somewhat of an unexpected bounce catching Jess out. Still in play. Two and three, worse than two. And absolutely punished by Izzy Marshall. <laughs> Let's see, it's up very high. Just clears that last rafter. It's well above the rafters. So two and three is the chase. She goes for it on the floor. Gets the right length on it. Can't follow up. Chase worse than two. So another short chase here. 40, 15. And it is now two more match points to Izzy Marshall. Just 
has scooped over. And Marshall takes it. On the second attempt, she is through to a British Open semi-final for the first time. And the first time she has contested an Open, she is a semi-finalist. What a remarkable match from Marshall. One of the biggest upsets of this British Ladies Open. What a great talent we have seen. What a great match we've seen tonight. Let's have a quick look at the match summary. One hour and 44 minutes for the match. Garside getting the bulk of oh the, the serves won and those points won from that six love second set, but not able to finish it in the end. Congratulations, Izzy Marshall. She is through to Saturday's semi-final. And we will uh, now leave you briefly. We'll be back very shortly with the second of tonight's singles quarterfinals. Uh, my name has been Ben Gatenbeek. You've been watching the British Ladies Open, and we'll see you again very shortly.